and take a few calls for Jesse Ventura. But the reason he's on is he's under attack. And I was the person who got a call at 6 a.m. on my cell phone when I'd just woken up a few years ago from the Opie and Anthony show saying, we want you to come on and defend your buddy Ventura that got, you know, beaten up or whatever. I said, what are you talking about? They go, you didn't hear Chris Kyle yesterday, blah, blah, blah. And turned out he'd been on Fox News and said it. So I called uh, Jesse Ventura. He was in Mexico. And he didn't believe it at first. He said, man, don't joke around, Alex. You don't normally do that. You, uh, you're kidding, right? Like I would go to a Navy SEAL event where I was at the commencement and say, I'm glad Navy SEALs are dead. That's just sickening. Plus, I'd be physically attacked. It was done to defame him because they knew he could probably win running for president. It was political assassination. And one problem is, as Jim Garrison said, if they can do that, next they physically kill you. So if they can destroy Ventura, whether you love him or hate him or in between, they can bring anybody down. Well, he spent millions of dollars. I'm not allowed to say the amount, but he spent most of his money. He's a, a humble guy, private guy, but I know a lot of the inside baseball Consulted on his TV shows, traveled around the country with him, been in two seasons. Knew him before that when he came out investigating 9-11, took a lot of courage there. They're scared of him. He's had the CIA visit him, basically, and, you know, ask, you know, uh, if he's going to play ball. Years ago, when he first got elected governor, and the truth is he hasn't played ball with him. And so now, 30-plus, 30 30-plus... 30 Top media organizations have filed suit to try to overturn his guilty verdict in the slander, defamation, libel trial that he won last year against Chris Kyle. The estate has made tens of millions of dollars. The media uh, combine the books made over $100 million. Ventura can give you all the latest numbers. The movie, hundreds of millions profit. Thank God they cut out the part or didn't put the part in about Ventura. I have nothing against Chris Kyle, but the, and I debated him on Open Anthony's show about all this, by the way. God rest his soul. But it wasn't true. And so if they're allowed to lie about people and get away with it, they can come out and say, I'm a methamphetamine dealer or I'm a child molester. And then I sue them. And I'm not litigious. I've not really shared this on air, but I've sued people for defamation twice. And I've won twice. Once they settled out of court, the other time I went to court and uh, I won because it was so cut and dry. But then they basically apologized and disappeared. They were harassing my sister that was in high school at the time. It was a media person saying where she was, that people should go get her. They were, they were saying things about me. I sued them. I won. The other time they, they settled and stopped, you know, saying things about me on air. And I had to because I had people calling me. You know, saying, is it true you're a drug dealer? I mean, I don't even use dr illegal drugs. Uh, is it true uh, that, you know, stuff like this? Now, imagine now if this ruling, and they overturned Ventura uh, versus, uh, you know, Chris Kyle and News Corp. If they overturn that, like the New York Times and Fox News and CNN and, you know, all the rest of them hope, Hearst Publishing, the list goes on and on. If they win... They can come out and say, Jesse Ventura, X. And then he can't go uphill, win the battle, basically win an amount of money that doesn't even really pay what it cost him, and then they can destroy the entire right to defend yourself in this country and basically legalize lying and destroying people in this country. It truly is frightening. And, and Jesse has spent almost all his money, all his retirement, all his savings um, on this. And this is a fight for all of us. I think people should donate to Jesse Ventura's defense fund for us all so that he's fought the fight. He's, he's not shut up. He's not quit. He's done everything he could do. He's not backed off. He's told the truth about 9-11, told the truth about testing on the troops, told the truth about HARP and chemtrails and FEMA camps and everything else. And it had and had Homeland Security show up, try to shut down their show and, and, and ban his, his FEMA camp program that I was in. I mean, he's been through a lot and been blackballed over this. And so if we don't support 
his appeal and bet on this winner, this champion for us all. We deserve what we get. So this is a platform to support patriots that are fighting. And I expect if anything ever happens to me and I'm in trouble, people to support me. Uh, so write your checks to P.O. Box 10629, White Bear Lake, Minnesota 55110. We'll put it on screen. Jesse Ventura, Aura.TV forward slash off the grid is his TV show. Jesse Ventura Appeal Fund, P.O. Box 10629, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, 55110. Jesse Ventura a Appeal Fund, P.O. Box 10629, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, 55110. And I would call it Stop Political Assassination Fund. Or, uh, you know, the headline last week we put on the video was Mainstream Media Asked Courts to Allow Them to Lie. I mean, this is unprecedented in thousands of years of common law where you can't get in trouble if you lie about somebody. And believe me, this is all going to be selectively enforced. This is so big media can get up there on TV. Well, they've already said that I, that I influenced the Boston Bombers and that I'm deeply racist. And my lawyer said, yeah, you can spend a million and a half dollars, we'll win. Then we'll have to appeal, they won't pay. And see, Ventura's already been through all this too. So he did this not for money, but to bring these liars to justice. All right, Jesse, that's a long intro rant. Thanks for coming on. Uh, put out your appeal here for everybody because you've been fighting and you need support in the war for freedom. Well, thank you, Alex, very much. And it's a difficult thing for me to do, but I'm, I'm kind of backed against the wall. But what this amounts to in the end is, is that it could be a business for them. Because the more people that they would defame and the more profit that they make from that defamation would earn them money. It would be equivalent to, Alex, you and I go out and rob the bank. So we get prosecuted for robbing the bank and they sentence us to, say, three years for that. That would be the defamation part. But the unjust enrichment part is after we would get out of jail in three years, we get to keep all the money that we robbed and got illegally through our illegal act. What they're asking for is the ability to defame someone, make profit from it, and the person who's defamed has no right. They get to keep all their profits. So it could become a profitable business for them defaming people because the more they would defame and be able to make money off the defamation, the more money they'd make. And it's kind of like... Remember when Howard Stern was on regular radio? Yes. And Howard, of course, would say things and he'd get a $10,000 fine from the FCC. Well, the station would, in essence, let Howard get away with that because on the flip side, Howard would make them a hundred grand. So they'd pay the 10 grand and be able to walk away with 90 grand profit. And that's, and that's what they want. They, they want the courts to legalize crime and to make a business out of uh, destroying people. It's incredible. Yeah, and that they can profit from that business and the person defamed is, is for lack of term, blank out of luck. You know, you're judged too bad for you. For listeners that just joined us, again, in about a minute or two before we go to break, describe uh, how they're appealing, what they're doing. Well, it's in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeal right now. First, they got three extensions. I mean, the trial was completed last July and August. They, they filed for three extensions, which strung it out over another nine-month period, drawing it out. And apparently the courts of appeals don't work in the summer. I don't know much about that at the federal level, but they don't do cases June, July, and August. And then they ramp up again in September, and that's when I'm due to go in front. And in the interim, these 33 major media conglomerates, I mean, you name it, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, uh, everybody, uh, you know, uh, every major media conglomerate signed on to a, a lawyer who submitted, uh, uh, they got technical names for it, to overturn my judgment. The to Motion overturn. Picture Association, all of them. Jesse Ventura, former Minnesota governor, is our guest. He dared to expose the FEMA camps. He dared to expose the government drug dealing, and now they're trying to destroy him by defaming him. If they can bring him down, they can bring us all down.
on with us a week and a half ago. Not one news story. And normally when he comes on, there's always stories about it. Not one news story about 33 of the biggest media companies filing a suit to overturn his ruling so that they can lie about people. This is a huge story for the First Amendment. Where is the ACLU? Where are all these organizations saying, hey, defend people's right to get justice when huge lies are told about them? This is just unprecedented. Jesse, during the break we were talking, you were making some really good points. Please repeat those. Well, it, it, you know, the thing is, is how much money they've made already. I mean, a year ago at my trial, Harper Collins, the book company itself, had made over $40 million on the book. Uh, the Kyle Estate had made around $6 million. And then the movie, I don't know what that went to, about $300 million I heard on that deal. And I know the Kyle Estate is getting 5% uh, of, of the, uh, the net revenue. You know, whatever that comes out to, I don't know if there'll be Hollywood bookkeeping in there or what will happen on that end. And, you know, Taya Kyle's out doing speaking engagements for $100,000 a pop. And not that I begrudge her any of that, but they've misled the public. She and her family in the estate has not had to pay one cent during this trial. This trial's gone into millions for me. They haven't paid a cent because they're covered by an insurance company. It's Jesse Ventura versus the media and a major insurance conglomerate. And yet they've, the media has portrayed it that I'm going after this widow and her children. It's upside down world. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and the point of the matter is, is that the bottom line to all of this comes down to how our moral compass is flipped upside down. The truth now is considered a negative. If you tell the truth, you're a bad person. This country seems to prefer liars because we make liars into heroes and truth tellers go to prison. I remember I had on the CIA guy, John, I forget his last name, starts with a K, I think, who was the guy who exposed the torturing. And he ends up going to prison for three and a half years, and the guys who actually tortured got nothing. The guys that exposed it goes to jail, and the guys that torture get nothing out of the deal. And see, that's the problem. Our country right now is morally upside down. We're making liars into heroes, and we're taking truth tellers and putting them in prison. That's the way tyranny works. And to be fair, there was no article since you were on. There was one article back in May uh, in the Star there in Minneapolis, St. Paul, that did report that, oh, this paper intends to sue Ventura. And they ran the headline that, uh, the uh, major media and scholars side with Kyle's wife against Jesse Ventura. I mean, talk about a spin headline. I mean, it should be, you know, major media to sue Ventura to legalize lying. Yeah, what, what are these scholars? Who are these scholars? What scholars are they talking about? <laughs> you mean they're paid people? The people that are on their payroll? Where does it go from here, Jesse? Well, for you know, now I just hold on and wait. Uh, I've had, I've had, I think five settlement conferences that have gotten nowhere. I mean, literally nowhere, hardly. And uh, they haven't even offered to pay what I've invested in this. So you know, it's, it, I don't expect a settlement. Uh, September, the Eighth Circuit Court will convene. Uh, if they rule in my favor. Uh, then I'll finally get the money that'll just, it'll pay off my lawyers, basically, out of the whole deal of what I won initially in court. Well, uh, people yeah. are always wanting patriots that are under attack to sue. Sue, sue, sue. Well, you've done it. You've won. And they don't like the fact that you sued this myth who conveniently uh, got killed, uh, God rest his soul. And so now, because you challenged a legend, they want to destroy you. I mean, it's just unprecedented. Where are the well, media associations? Where are the people out there wanting to support people's right to the truth? You know, to me, that's what it all comes down to, Alex. Are we a country that's going to stand for truth? You know, the old saying, truth, I think it was on Superman, truth, justice, and the American way. Are we going to support the truth, or do we prefer lying? And uh, 
You know, when you look at our government, our leaders, lying is an acceptable business. They lie all the time. And that's one of the reasons I don't think I'd make a good president, Alex. I tell the truth. You're not a congenital liar. I say that not tongue-in-cheek, but I think today the president has to be able to get on television, look at the American people, and freaking lie. More on that when we come back. We'll cover world news with Jesse Ventura and open the phones up to take your calls. You need to support him. It's very, very simple. If you ask champions, a Ron Paul, a Jesse Ventura, whoever it is, to go out and to fight against the globalists, to fight against the open world government we're seeing, to fight against our water being stolen from the Great Lakes, to fight against uh, the NAU being set up, the TPP, GMO, globalism, the government funding ISIS. Then when people come after him, you've got to support him. And I think we're betting on a winner. He's already won once. I don't think that the courts are going to overturn the entire system of letting people get redress in court. Because then people can argue that they're allowed to take it to the street. I mean, if you're going to let the media sit up there, I mean, I've had people in media before say I'm a drug dealer and a child molester. Two different media outfits. I sued them both. And I didn't want to sue them. But I had to, to get them to admit they were lying, to get them to stop saying it. People that are jealous of you, hate you, whatever, want to bring you down, they can't beat you. It's like if you have a better restaurant than the one across the street. They'll just say you, you feed dog meat or roaches. It's not true. you got to sue them. Or they won't stop saying there's roaches in your food or rat turds. This is what losers do. This is how they operate. They think it's okay to sit there and lie about people. And then they want to be protected. I, I'm up here. I'm saying the things I say every day. And knock on wood, I've never been sued except for a copyright thing that got thrown out, for defamation. Never been sued for any of that because I watch what I say. may sound wild, but it's there. If I make a little mistake or something, I correct it. But there's no malice of forethought with intent to do harm like what was done by the media to Jesse Ventura. They're coming after him, and I'll tell you why. I would support a Rand Paul for president if he was going to get the nomination. They're fixing it where it, more and more it's looking like they're going to have Trump come in, pull votes away from libertarian type folks, libertarian Republicans. We're going to go to Jesse Ventura on this in just a moment. And then that will catapult Jeb to the head. But Hillary's people are at Bilderberg. It looks like she's who they're planning on. They're going to play the whole feminist card that if you don't like her, you don't like women. That type of baloney. But regardless, if there's a Jeb Bush or there's a Hillary Clinton, I will support a third party move in this country because those people work together. They're CIA. It's all staged. Some would argue, hey, don't get libertarians running. Don't get a strong candidate. It'll pull away from conservatives. And then the Democrats will win. Well, I mean, if it's the Boehners of the world, we don't need them. They give Obama more support than the Democrats do. So regardless, justice be done by the heavens fall, Jesse Ventura needs to be supported. People need, we'll put the P.O. box up on screen, so folks can send him checks, send him cash, whatever, and 100% of it will go towards the defense of his win, so that he doesn't have to sell his house and basically be bankrupt, and, and then they win. A lot of us giving a little bit can help this guy. That's what we're here to do is a platform to help other patriots. We hang together or we hang separate. Appeals Fund, P.O. Box 10629, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, 55110. P.O. Box 10629, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, 55110. You can also go to aura.tv forward slash off the grid. And if I was them, I would set up a PayPal. Maybe they've already done it. That's where you really get the donations. I'd do a Kickstarter. I haven't had time to tell Ventura what I do. I'll just set on air. I'd start a Kickstarter or something else. Uh, and I would, uh, you know, and I'd say to, to stop the, 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 the Goliath media from, uh, you know, legalizing lying, you know, a fund to stop them, a fund for justice, uh, a fund for everybody. I would do that. I would have a PayPal immediately. But for now, P.O. Box 10629, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, 55110. And I'd also email this video once it's up tonight or tomorrow from the radio slash TV show to every media outlet and say, especially ones that are involved in this, to say, 
oh, we notice you're not reporting on how an unprecedented case to overturn libel and slander laws and defamation laws in this country. I mean, this is an important story regardless. So I would support Jesse Ventura. I know I'm going to write a check. We might even do a little fundraiser here ourselves because we hang together or we hang separate. Okay, Governor. The toll-free number to join us, take a few calls in the last segment, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231 for quick questions for the governor. Uh, but shifting gears to just the state of the world and everything that's happening in election 2016, you told me bombshell political news that I think if we train it on to everything else that's happening and get some attention to why they're trying to politically assassinate you right now. and. Uh, so I hope you'll go ahead and share that story right now on air. Well, it, uh, through my son, apparently, a person fairly high up in the Libertarian Party is encouraging me to attend their convention, which they hold June of 2016. See, the Libertarians are brilliant. They don't waste money. They, they, they don't make their nomination till June. I mean, right now, these people are spending hundreds of millions of dollars spinning their wheels when, uh, if you're like me, I truthfully, the election doesn't start until the summer before November, basically Labor Day on. But the libertarians have put out a gesture to me to come to their convention and that I would have a very good chance of getting their nomination for president. And uh, then I would be on their, the liberty, the libertarians virtually have ballot access, I think, pretty well across the whole United States, every state. But one thing we'll have to be clear on. I do not want to join them as a party. If they endorse me, I want it to be clear they're endorsing me, they're giving me the nomination if I so choose to go after it. But I want to be able to have the armament, Alex, of being the first presidential president elected since George Washington who does not belong to a political party. I need that from them, that they won't require me to be in their party to receive their nomination, because that's firepower that I think you can win the election with. Is that simple thing? If you if be the first president who does not belong to a political party since the father of our country, George Washington. Well, well that makes out. sense. People should nominate whoever is the best for the job and who has integrity uh, at these conventions, anyways. Not someone who's been a party hack for fifty years. Not just that alone. We need to break the stranglehold of these two political, as Ralph Nader called them, political dictators. You can run on destroying the fraudulent two-party system. Exactly. And, and elect, elect a president who doesn't belong to the, as, as my book, the Democrats and the Republicans. Elect somebody that's not a gang member. And you've already done it as a, a mayor and a governor. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But, but that's what you got to do. The key to me, and, and the advantage is in our favor. Look at the last national election. 64% of the people failed to turn out to vote. Well, those are sure. all my potential customers. Those are my potential voters. If I can rejuvenate them to come back and watch their vote count, you win. Sure. Well, well your son works in news media. A huge majority. Your son works in news media. That's how they were able to contact him. I can get a hold of the president of the Libertarian Party probably today. Uh, do you want me to call them and get them on the phone with you? I mean, let's get no, this. No, you just want to wait. Yet. <laughs> All right, not yet, because I don't want to, Alex. I don't want to get in too early. I want to wait till it's down to two. I, I, let the pikers jump in there now. I don't want nothing to do with it till June of next year. Well, it's all in the timing. I agree, but the system is trying to assassinate you right now and ignore Well, you. we'll deal with that. We're dealing with that right now. If we succeed on that level, it'll open the door for me next June. If I fail, then close the door on next June. There's another alternative. If I, if I fail in this lawsuit, you can forget about next June. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, I've got a lot of Republican friends. They're libertarians. They're trying to take over the Republican Party. And we've seen the Tea Party do that partially. But still, Boehner just came in with everybody else is steamrolled with the TPP and the rest of it. I mean, I'm of one school of thought that, uh, you know, we could get a Rand Paul in or something. But, but the problem is his own party's coming out against him. So I don't want to hear it from Republicans and people that if I was to support you for running for libertarian, you know, that it was a waste or something, because if it's Jeb Bush and it's Hillary, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Jesse, that's the same people. Exactly. It, it is anyway. 
corporate the corporate powers have paid off both of these parties, Alex. And it's like going to the Super Bowl and you bet on both teams. You can't lose then, can you? No, the establishment, but but I mean, they know. really own Hillary and Jeb. I mean, it, it's sick. Well, they own they own they own everybody. Any candidate that comes out of these two parties, I'll be interested to see what happens with Bernie Saunders because he's not he's building momentum and he's not going to get the Democratic. Will he continue with the race or will he then step aside and let Hillary have it in the end? Yeah, he could split no. Democrat vote. I love that idea. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know what will happen on that end. But, uh, you know, all I know is that I want more than two choices. I want more than Coke and Pepsi. Well, we know this. The country is in dire, dire straits. Uh, TPP is in place basically now. Ugh. What would you do as president? If you were elected president under your constitutional powers, what would you do in the first month? me exactly what my constitutional powers are and then once learning that what i would do uh some of the first things i would do i would pull us out of the middle east we would not be fighting a war over there anymore would you put ron paul in your cabinet if he wanted to be absolutely i'd love to put him in charge of the banks <laughs> secretary of treasury yeah i'd love to put ron paul because he's a brilliant guy, and when it comes to the when it comes to the uh, central bank stuff, there's not a guy I know that knows better than him. Very exciting. What else would you do? Uh, would you continue yeah. like Obama's done, the war on marijuana? No, that's another thing I would do. I would stop the the entire war on drugs. It's a miserable failure, and my belief is this: addiction we addiction should not be treated criminally. It should be treated medically you can be addicted to caffeine how many people out there that listen to you alex have to get up and have a morning cup of coffee i'm addicted to get their caffeine going i'm addicted well, what's the difference between that and all the other ones hey nothing. these energy drinks are like cocaine or something you're damn right and the point is nothing the, my point is that the government that you should not be convicted of anything that you do with your own body that's your business you talk about the Fourth Amendment, illegal search, a reasonable search and seizure. How is it reasonable for them to check your body for what you want to put into it or ingest it? Now, don't get me wrong. If you take drugs and go rob the bank, I will prosecute you for robbing the bank. I don't give a damn what you took that made you do it. You'll get prosecuted for the crime. Oh, but yeah, I they would, use drugs I as an excuse. Would, I'm sick of that. I would, com I would completely end the war on drugs right now. Colorado is making a billion dollars this year selling marijuana. The budget for the judiciary in Washington has already dropped 15%. That's massive because of their legalization just of marijuana. Yeah, they're not prosecuting people and they're taxing it. Let's take a call. Elijah in California listening on KOMY 1340 AM uh, there in Santa Cruz. Go ahead. You're on the air. Welcome. Now, I want to know what you're going to do with the TPP thing. Uh, Mr. F uh, Senator Paul is the only one, sadly, to say that has come out against it. Now, if you and him link up, uh, what, what do you think about that? Now, that's a good question, Jesse. What would you do to the TPP? Well, it would be difficult. I mean, if they pass it through and they sign it, you know, you got to abide by contracts or whatever. That's I, I would do everything to end it. Well, you could bully uh, pulpit against it and get Congress to repeal it. Yeah, and because to me, these trade agreements, it's one thing if it's a level playing field, but it never is. And in the case of this thing, you're looking at sweatshops, you're looking at slave labor, you're looking at the very things that this country has fought for hundreds of years to get rid of. And it, and it ties directly into our own country's assault on the unions. Now, can unions be bad? Of course they can. They're run by people. And when bad people get power... Bad things happen, but unions are still the backbone that created the middle class in this country. Collective bargaining, but they got taken over. And uh, I mean, remember the unions supported NAFTA and GATT. That's suicide. Uh, let's go ahead and. But you're right. I mean, it is good to have a checks and balances. Uh, let's go to Robert in Missouri. You're on the air. Go ahead with Jesse Ventura. 
Hey, uh, guys, uh, I think the only feasible way, Jesse, if you're really serious about running for as an alternative candidate to the two parties is to basically consolidate a few of the parties together, such as Libertarians, the Constitution well, Party. And let me others. explain. That doesn't work. I tried when I was governor of Minnesota to bring, we had four or five political parties other than the Democrats and Republicans. I held a meeting at the governor's residence. I brought the leaders all together. It was like herding cats. They all <laughs> got their ego. They all got their main issue. And the one thing we could all agree upon was campaign finance reform. None of us took dirty money. And I said, can't we start from there and build and have one candidate? It was, it was, it was like I said, herding cats. It did no good. So I ended it right there because at the end of the day, we accomplished nothing. Everybody wants to be in charge and nobody will listen to anybody else. That's right. My show, I'm trying to build a coalition of people that are against being conquered by these foreign banks. I mean, while we're all fighting with each other over petty issues, we've been conquered and, and now they're getting rid of the entire Bill of Rights and Constitution. Yep. Uh, let's go to Chad in Washington. Chad, you're on the air with Jesse Ventura. We're skipping this network break. Uh, go ahead, uh, Chad. Hey, guys. Yeah, I just wanted to know what you plan on doing about geoengineering. Because I know you had Ken Caldera on a while back. Yes, Governor, chemtrailing, uh, these secret programs they admit are going on but are classified. What would you do as president? Well, to me... Everything should be declassified after a certain length of time because we are the boss, the American people. And how dare them use our tax dollars to do things and not tell us what they do with it? It's that simple. I and you have the right to know what our taxes are spent on. We have every right to know that, and to me, that is a major right. You have the major right to know what they're spending your money on, and if they're spending it on chemtrails, we need to know why, how, and what for. Okay, let's talk to Trish in Canada. Trish, you're on the air with Jesse Ventura. Good day, gentlemen. How are you today? Good. Governor, would you comment on blue gold, our planet's water supply? We both well, it's in trouble greatly. because uh, you can see uh, the big guy in Texas bought all that land. I forget his name now by the aquifer in Oklahoma. They got the funny name down there. Yeah, T-Bone Pickens. Yeah, there you go, T-Bone. I always forget. Yeah, he bought all that land. Plus, a fifth of the world's fresh water is the Great Lakes. And they're already ta you're, not, you're not allowed to take water from the Great Lakes. But, they, as usual, they left them out. They left a loophole. You can go to a tributary and suck out all the water you want. So the Great Lakes are falling at a drastic uh, rate. The other thing... They ship it to China. Well, it's true. The other thing is this fracking. A lot of people think it's wonderful that we got fracking to get oil. No, it's not, because they trade water for oil. And the water that's used in fracking is unusable for like 30 years or something like that or longer. And I do not want to trade water for oil because if I'm out in the desert, Alex, and I'm dying of starvation and I come across a bottle of water or a can of oil, which one would I need to drink to survive? Well, Common Core says 2 plus 2 equals 5, so I guess you drink the oil. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I picked the water. <laughs> well, that's because you're a conspiracy theorist. As, as we all know, you know, you can't survive drinking oil. Oh, I was being sarcastic, absolutely. Uh, I want to play uh, a short piece of what Ron Paul said about an hour and a half ago here on the broadcast with us about the state of the world economy and get your take on that. Jesse Ventura is our guest. Let's go ahead and play this clip. Yeah, I think uh, for the not to come would be a surprise to me. And you've been involved in this a long time. I mean, it wasn't like you didn't know what was happening with the housing bubble. And we had the NASDAQ bubble. And uh, now, now we have other bubbles. We still have another stock market bubble, and there's another housing bubble going on. But the big bubble, I think, is in the bond bubble. It's been going on for 35 years, taking interest rates from 21% down to actually negative. And they've been getting away with it. So... This means distortion. Not only is there money involved, but it distorted all the investment over these periods of time. And the biggest distortion that it encourages debt. It encourages debt for a lot of people, but in particular government. And as long as our government uh, is able to print the reserve currency, it's going to limp along, even though our economy is limping along. But that will come to an end. And uh, right now we're starting to see the whole thing 
coming apart. I mean, we look at, at Detroit as an example. We see what's happening in Greece. They're worrying about what's going to happen, uh, you know, after Greece is recognized as actually totally bankrupt. There'll be other countries. This distortion has been going on for so long. Most people think that when governments print money, that the only thing that happens is that prices go up as a consequence of inflation. And a lot of that is true, and it's a serious problem and destroys the middle class and the poor. But to me, the bigger distortion is the lack of pricing for money and causing people to do dumb things. And that's why they overbuild and overinvest and governments overspend. And then you have the Keynesians still in charge that says, <clears throat> that says that the solution for this is just to spend more money and print more money, and that's coming to an end. <clears throat> the day of reckoning is, uh, is, is at hand. The so, day of reckoning is at hand. Uh, Governor Venturi, you did a whole special banking report on this, I guess about four years ago, on one of your hit TV program episodes. Went to Wall Street, interviewed the experts. They even admitted that we were right about this. Now Puerto Rico says they're going bankrupt. Most counties are bankrupt. Most cities are. People aren't self-sufficient. I, I mean, government's digging in. Elites are moving to armored redoubts. What does Jesse Ventura and his gut think is really going on? Well, you know, it, it's a bad situation because we've allowed this debt to run wild. As Congressman Paul said, I mean, the last time I heard a child born today starts its life off $50,000 in debt. Now, that's ridiculous. That's obscene. And that child's not even going to get a job for 18 years. How far in debt will that child be 18 years after being born with the way that we have ignored? And who's to blame for all this? The Democrats and Republicans, because they've been in charge for 150 years, and they are responsible. I've said it before. If they would run their home finances like they ran the governments, uh, they'd be street people living out of bags. But th this is what it's turned into. I think the biggest problem is this debt is going to come home to roost. And when it does, I don't know what the results are going to be, Alex. I know this. It's got me guaranteed wanting to get a place even further out in the country. And thank God for the Second Amendment. Jesse Ventura Appeal Fund, they're trying, to, 33 to Goliaths are trying to stop him and overturn his victory against uh, Chris Kyle. And the fable he told, according to the jury, totally made up. Jury found it. Judge wrote a big 20-something page opinion saying dead on. Uh, P.O. Box 10629, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, 55110. Uh, and look, we're going to lose everything. There's so many middle class and wealthy people who aren't globalists who sit back on the sidelines. You're not safe doing that. It's all coming down. You got to be all in or we're going to lose it. And we got more calls for you. But I don't have to go. Jesse Ventura, our guest, Infowars.com, of course, is our news site. A ton of news we haven't even gotten to today. I'm going to do some overdrive after he leaves us uh, to get to some of these breaking top stories at Infowars.com. But in the last minute we have, sir, closing comments. Well, first of all, Alex, I'll say this. If you want me on more or weekly or every other week, I'm happy to do it. Please, please get a PayPal or a Kickstarter, because that's how well, you're really going to get support. I'm just happy to come on with you and keep talking and waking people Oh, I know. I, I mean, I go on your show. You invite me on your TV and radio show. I want to do it. I mean, I understand you're saying that you want to come on just to talk, but I'm saying I want to raise a bunch of money to help you win this thing, brother. Well, I'll get to all that, but, you know, the main, I, you know it, that's important, but the important thing is making vigilant citizens out there and waking people up and taking our country back. And we can do it at the ballot box. We still have that power. And and I just like to finish and say thank you, Alex, for all your support. You've been terrific, and uh, we'll keep the fight going as long as we possibly can. I mean, I'm I'm in for the duration, and we'll see what happens on this deal. But thanks to all your listeners out there, and I I really really appreciate it. And always remember, the truth will set you free. The truth is still an ultimate good thing, no matter what they tell you. All right, let me say bye to you during the break. Absolutely. And not only is this cause just, when I'm somebody's friend, I'm their friend. So I stand with Jesse Ventura. Please stand with him with me. This is a very important fight. He's taking on the whole beast. We'll be back in overdrive. I'm going to say bye to the governor.